Okay, ready? ready? Three, two, one. Hi, Jillian. Hello. Do you go by Jill? I go by Jillian most of the time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I thought I heard Jill. Um, you are one of the most connected educators in the school <laughs> district. So I know um, your mom uh -huh. works here. Uh, she's one of our TLMA's Technology Library Media, Media Assistant. Assistant. Yes. And what site? Orange Thorpe. She's at Orange Thorpe. And then Heather. Uh-huh is your sister, sister. Uh -huh. and she's at Richmond. Richmond sixth grade yes okay how'd you end up here no i'm just kidding yeah, that's a long story <laughs> how'd, yeah. you, how'd you hear about fullerton um so we, we went through fullerton you went to school here yes we went my sister and i both went to orange Thorpe, nicholas what? fullerton yeah wow yes that's kind of amazing it is and it's so fun. uh do you have a favorite grade when you were in school um i loved like it's, I mean, I'm a teacher. I loved all the grades, but <laughs> um, I loved all the grades. I loved all the grades. Uh, it's fun because I work now with my former third grade teacher. Mm -hmm. I see lots of old teachers. Oh yeah, lots oh. of old teachers um, that I had in the district at trainings and stuff. So yeah. it's fun to be back. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Okay, and um, so tell me in terms of the teaching part of it, just kind of walk me through your your history. You know, where did you start? How did you decide to become a teacher? Uh, I didn't think I was ever going to be a teacher. My sister always knew. I knew I wanted to work with kids. Okay. Um, so I've been lots of things in the past. Um, I was a technology assistant at Raymond actually in 2008 Okay. for one year. And then um, they restructured that whole job configuration. Um, so then I've worked at preschools. I've taught preschool. I was a tech in Anaheim. Um, I taught preschool after that again. <laughs> then I was a librarian there. And um, I did that for several years, which is the most fun job I've ever had um, doing all of the things in the library there that I can now do in my classroom and all of my coworkers were like you need to just do it and like get your credential I'm like I'm 30 like I'm not gonna do it now and they're like you're doing it now and so at 30 I went back to school and got my credential and became a teacher that's a process yeah that's a process there's a couple things I want to pick up on one was technology you mentioned that a couple of times yes what what's your relationship with technology like you, a, a f, you know early adopter are you a fan are you yeah you know, what's I am the deal? A, i'm a huge fan of technology and how it in education how it helps enhance what students are learning and how students are learning and how they're demonstrating their knowledge um so i was a technology assistant in anaheim for several years actually my boss was jeremy davis what yeah <laughs> so connected he, yeah, connected i know it's a small world <laughs> Um, so he was my boss there and he actually did um, a teacher training course to get teachers to use technology and invited me to come and do it with the teachers. And so he taught us all sorts of things like the old like flip video cameras, um, web cameras. Um, we were doing like all sorts of early discovery education stuff that he used to do in the classroom. So from there, I was like, okay, let's do this in my library, my computer lab, wherever I was. And as a librarian, I actually presented at Q on augmented reality in the library. Um, so bringing your walls to life inside your classroom. Um, so I just, I've been a huge fan of tech forever. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, augmented reality, do you remember the app back then? Erasma. Erasma, okay. Uh -huh. And do you, is there a new app for that? that I haven't you, found one. Okay. No, I've okay. been looking. I Right now we've just QR codes because I can't find right. something that works the same way as it used to. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to talk afterwards because I know Dr. Bob, the superintendent, is into augmented reality and, and having, you know, people scan stuff and yeah. like 3D art pop up. So, um, yeah, but it's, it, it used to be Erasmus was like the one stop, like, yeah, go and it there. was really easy, like, and, and user friendly, like my kids were doing it and then yeah. they changed it. Yeah. So, yeah. Fantastic. I love that. So is there a favorite technology now that you're like, oh, this is an interesting app. The kids are fascinated by it or you personally like it? Um, actually, uh, flip a clip. Well, okay. I was introduced to it this year and my kids are obsessed with it. They're doing all kinds of movies with it. Um, right now we just finished Black History Month biographies and they're, they turned um, some of their, their African-American leaders into flip-a-clip stories of their lives. 
um, like Simone Biles, like Gabby Douglas on their gymnastic routines or Ruby Bridges at um, the school that she went to. Um, so Flip a Clip has really been a big one this year in my classroom. That's cool. I love that. Uh, give me one other technology that you think maybe other teachers should check out. Um, I think, well, I just started stop motion literally last week. So that's been really fun. I think I heard you talking about that with Amy out, yes. out before the interview. Yeah. We, so tell me about that. Um, the same thing we, I had early finishers. So I'm like, here's some apps, go do it. And they, um, turned, uh, Gabby Douglas, the gymnast, her floor, her, uh, not floor routine, her bar routine um into stop motion what? yeah so she's on the balance beam she's flying through the air she's flipping they have her on like fishing wire at the end she bows like the whole routine wow yeah that's amazing yeah i was gonna say explain it more but i'm like it's a podcast there's yeah. <laughs> it's probably better to see it maybe send me a link yeah yeah, yeah. it's on my instagram <laughs> oh nice <laughs> yes. okay is that where amy saw it I th yes she's she like it. yeah okay she's like you're a good follow on social media yeah do you mind sharing your handle no it is uh, i think learning with miss harris Okay. I think that's it. That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Now, uh, the range of grades you've been in uh, classrooms, I saw it in the notes here. Somebody, by the way, we have, uh, you gave us some names. Yeah. Um, we usually ask for three. Somehow we got five. Uh, you gave us five names of people to contact. I think I know why now. Okay. Uh, because, <laughs> it's not wrong. Yeah, it's not wrong. You're just overachiever. Uh, <laughs> I did my mom and sister because they're in the district. And then you asked, so right. you asked for four. Um, family yeah. so I gave both of them you asked I think co-worker right. and I gave my partner from last year and then admin at the time my principal was on maternity leave right. so I gave right both. you're like let's so cover like, let's all go, the bases yeah, yeah just yes. in case I I'm don't learning know. about you yeah you'll be very thorough <laughs> yes uh, so Heidi speaking of thorough uh, she said you've taught preschool kinder third and fourth grade yes, is that accurate correct. are there more grades than that uh that no I well I used to do like some um, reading instruction. And so I've had kids of other ages, but okay. cl in contained classroom, preschool, kinder, third and fourth. Okay. Uh, do you, is there like a certain grade that you are kind of like more smitten by or that you have a great memory of? What? Kinder and preschool will always have my heart. That's my wow. background, early childhood. I love it. Um, but I don't know if I could go back to the littles. I, I would 100%, but it's been fun. I think third grade. Sorry, I teach fourth grade right now, but I think third grade's my <laughs> the favorite. The kids aren't listening Don't to this. listen, kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, third grade, I love third grade content, like intro, multiplication, division. Fullerton history is my absolute favorite to teach. Um, so I think third grade is my That's sweet good. spot, but I've been in fourth the last two years and I love it too. That's great. Um, I was surprised. That I'm an English teacher. I taught high school, but I was surprised that you led off with the math. So tell me, <laughs> tell me a little bit about math and like why that's fun at that grade level to introduce those concepts yeah. and talk about them. Um, I always, you know, growing up, everyone's like, I'm not a math person. And when I became a teacher, I was like, I, so I, okay. When I became a teacher, I was like, everyone's a math person. Like, we can do this. Like, let's do math. Right. You're going to need it forever, especially like multiplication. And I teach my kids, like, you're going to use this every day, no matter if you think you are or not. Um, and then this year, I was accepted into the Coatsin program. So this is my first year as a fellow, and I chose math. And I was back and forth, like, I'm the only one doing math at my school. Like, I should just go do Reader's Workshop, which is something I wanted to do. But they were like choose the subject that you feel like you're strongest in teaching and i'm like i think i'm a really strong math teacher um and so i chose math and this year it's taken off like I, my whole math instruction has changed thanks to codes in um but i just love like bringing math to life making my kids feel like i can learn math i'm good at math and building their confidence in math Right, right. So tell me, you have the Coats and Model, you have somebody who works with you. Yes. Mentor, is that the title? Yes. So you said, thanks to Coats and it took off. But just unpack that a little bit more yeah. because I'm expecting they're, you know, talking to you about your lesson, they're observing, you're reflecting on it. So in that reflection, what are you coming up with? So much. So much. So much. <laughs> so um, my math instruction used to be like, sit, do notes, I do, we do, you do, like that whole model. And now it's like, we're doing, you're doing, we're doing, like I'm not doing. <laughs> and so it's fun because you, 
and like I'm ready to dive into next year like I'm not ready but I'm ready to dive into next year and see how this will go starting from the beginning of the year because you for me like I, I give kids a problem like a real life problem everything's connected to something like tangible so it's not just eight times four or 800 times 425 it's like you have 800 excuse me yeah apparently my phone is attached to my <laughs> uh i'm gonna mute that and decline that call okay no back worries. to the real yeah. world <laughs> examples the, so it's like <laughs> Kids are always like eight times four. That doesn't mean anything. But I'm like, you have eight trays of cookies. There's four cookies on each tray so they can visualize mm. it. They can see it. They're tied into it. And then um, so then this year it's like expanded. Like you have 800 trays with 425 cookies on each tray because we have to do, you know, multi digit multiplication. And they laugh. They think it's silly, but they're like, wow, you like you made this many cookies. I'm like, you're right. You did the math correct. But they're like, attaching it to something and so now it, through codes in it's like all about what strategies are you using where you are at in your learning so instead of here's a strategy you have to use it it's what is the kid bringing to the table how are they solving it that makes sense in their brain and so when we um debrief after our lesson we look at all of their work and so i've never dove as far into the data as i am this year and keeping track of what strategy do they use? Did they direct model? Did they use, are they already at an algorithm? Like where are they in their journey? Did they, for fractions, like are they making the cuts for their fractional cuts based on how many people are sharing or how many things are sharing? And that tells you like we do this a couple times a week. If I do this a couple times a week, then that pulls my small groups immediately. Like you don't know how to make the model, let's pull these five kids in a small group. You don't know how to cut based on you're sharing four cups of something. So you are making your small groups and then they're already making progress because that small group's exactly what they need. And so our data is driven completely by that. And once majority of kids are ready, then you make the problem more intense and it just keeps going based on everything they're giving you. All right, so let me, let me ask yeah. this. I'm gonna ask you to say the same thing but to somebody who has no knowledge of data, like maybe I'm a parent, okay. right? And so sell me on the same thing. Like what is the benefit in 20 seconds, 30 seconds of what you just described? So the benefit is kids are just, kids are showing their learning how they wanna do it and not being forced to use the strategy I give them. And then from their work, I constantly have something to look at to know how to help them how to help them move forward in the next time we do this. That's great. Yeah. That's fabulous. Yeah. You're, I'm sold on math. Now. Yeah, come to math. <laughs> come, to, <laughs> come, come to math Come side. to math. <laughs> um, so there's a ton of quotes from, from people. Uh, so most of it's about fun and adventure. I, I think I read that like multiple times over in a row. Let's just take, okay, so I'll give you the <laughs> quote. Okay. Um, Jillian loves adventure and fun. This is from Tracy, uh -huh. your principal. Um, what does that mean to you when you hear hear her say that about you? What do you think of? Um, I love like in my personal life, I love like traveling and journeying and trying something new and just making things fun for myself, for my family, for my friends. And I try to bring that into the classroom. Like I'm the teacher who's going to try and find any field trip we can go on. Like last week, we just went on um, to the Honda Center for the big steam day they had which was insane like 13,000 students wow it was loud <laughs> it was, yeah um so i tried to like push my kids to like something new like a bunch of kids in my class had never been there before and so bringing that to them or just making learning fun instead of like we're gonna sit you're gonna listen like let's um <laughs> today we were talking about progressive verbs and that's not fun but i have a um, powerpoint of like a cat photoshopped doing like chores and i said this is my cat doing my chores at my house let's use the progressive verbs to describe what he's doing and so just making it fun something that they can attach to and not feel like i'm learning but are they are learning right right so make kind of it's that bringing that engagement from less of a traditional classroom to more of like, I'm really interested in this. Yeah. Yeah, but like curiosity comes to mind. Yes. Um, so somebody mentioned um, 
Uh, speaking of curiosity, and I don't know what this quote means. I mean, I know what it means on the surface, but uh, this is from Lindy uh, McNutt, and she says, you're a wonderful colleague and friend. You can find uh, Jillian as one of the last teachers to leave Sunset Lane because you're either collaborating with others, having one last conversation, or checking out the beautiful sunset before <laughs> heading home. Like, what is that last? I get the others. Um, so one of my coworkers, uh, Grace, she teaches sixth grade. Um, we have started, cause we're there so late and it, and everyone's like, why are you here so late? I'm like, we're enjoying each other's company. We're planning crazy things. Like, um, so then it ended up, you know, we kept going outside to leave and the sun was setting. So we would post videos of ourselves like, we're still here, sun setting, and we became sunset buddies. Oh. So when we leave the sun setting, we'll like post it on Instagram. At Sunset Lane. Yeah, at Sunset oh Lane, Sunset Buddies. It's perfect. Yeah. It, it's awesome. Very cool. Uh, so we talked about Coatsin, uh, we talked about adventure and travel, but I want to go back to like personal adventure and travel because a, a number of locations came up, like actual. I think Hawaii, Scotland, um, there's probably Alaska. Yeah. I don't know. Am I right? Yeah. So t uh, tell me about travel. Like, what does that mean to you? Where are you going next? Favorite trip? Tell me. Yeah. Um, so I've always wanted to travel and I was always nervous to, you know, just go. So in college, um, I went to Chapman University for my undergrad and it was um, the second semester of sophomore year and they advertised um you can do a summer program abroad and then this was 2006 2006 i think mm -hmm. um they said you could do a summer abroad and your any summer class you do your tuition is covered by the by the school so if you do a summer class it's covered and they said this also includes summers abroad and you just have to pay the program free fees. And so I went to the meeting that like talked about all the classes. I researched the classes. I signed up a non-refundable deductible and I told my mom I'm going to Europe. And she's like, what? And <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that I'm gonna do summer school in Europe. And so I went and it was, um, it just hit the travel bug on the head. And I did two weeks in London, a week in Paris, a week in Rome. And our professors went with us. We stayed in hotels and our learning, I think this is where I get it from now, now that I'm talking about it. Our learning was out in the street, in the streets. But like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so like our class was the history of London architecture and compared to how Paris was set up. And so we would talk about um, like city planning and how the streets are and how the churches were built and all of this. And so when we're learning about so-and-so architect, we're standing in front of his church, like taking notes. And if we're learning about um, this like wing of houses, we're standing in front of those houses. And that's so awesome. that's where I was like, okay, that summer did it. I went two summers or two, my senior year, I went to Costa Rica and studied there for a month. Um, the Alaska, I went on Alaskan cruise, the Bahamas cruise. Um, next week I'm going to Aruba. Um, we might go to Scotland next summer as a family. We're going to Alani for Christmas this year. So Alani, what? Uh, Hawaii. Oh, okay. The Disney Hotel. Oh, nice. Yeah. So my sister won a trip to Alani oh. uh, last year. So we went last, not this past Christmas, but the one before. And so we're going back um, this year. We booked rooms. So yeah, yeah the That's travel, cool. it's crazy. Tell me about connections you've made from travel back to teaching in the classroom because I imagine things might come up impromptu because you enjoy travel. Yeah. So you might talk about it or share. What do you see your students connecting with or what have you brought in intentionally that's made a, a difference in the classroom? Yeah, we. I've talked a lot. Um, so my Costa Rica trip was uh, through sociology. My major was sociology and women's studies. And um, when we were there, we were learning in the mornings about um, Spanish language and culture. So that has come through, especially this year. I have a higher level, a higher amount of Spanish speaking students in my class. Um, and so that's been fun to like bring their cultures in. Um, but we did that in the mornings and then in the afternoons we did social projects. And so we worked with organizations and women's studies and I've been able to talk to students in the past about um, that kind of stuff and bring them, you know, aware of what's going on outside of our world. 
Um, and so this year um, was the first year I really started to bring like I've always talked a little bit about my students and have I've always have them share their cultures. But this year we've been doing it intentionally. So we did a month long Dia de los Muertos project um, where we built altars for a loved one, where we really got to know somebody in our family who passed away and how that is celebrated and changed a lot of students, you know, ideas of I thought this was supposed to be scary, but actually it's about love and remembrance. So that was fun. Um, just bringing things like that into the classroom and they love hearing travel stories or looking at pictures like we were learning about volcanoes and I got to visit a volcano in Costa Rica so I got to bring pictures of that and they're like oh my gosh you were there so they're like they buy into it more that's awesome that's awesome all right I'm keeping an eye on time there's okay. so many quotes with <laughs> with with five people um, so I want to uh, okay crystal uh, she wrote, last year, I was a first year teacher in a 3-4 combo. Jillian was on my fourth grade team. We immediately clicked. Um, and then she talks about a great partnership, uh, similar teaching styles. Tell me a little bit about Crystal and what that's like to work with um, her and maybe just in general, like a first year teacher. Yeah, uh, my first year wasn't that long ago. And so when she was thrown in last year to a combo, um, I was like, yay, Crystal, because she was at our school the year before. So I was excited for her, but I was like, oh my gosh, what are you gonna do um, <laughs> as a combo? Because I've never taught a combo. And I was like, wow, that's gonna be hard. I'm yeah, I'm so <laughs> sorry for you. I'm over here in fourth grade. Uh, but we were neighbors and I was like, let's just team and figure it out together. Because last year was my first year in fourth. I had done um, third, I looped my kids, which was really fun. Mm. Um, which is why I didn't have the combo because I brought my kids with me. Um, but we immediately clicked. We are very similar personalities. We're both like, let's try anything once and see what happens. Like I brought her with me to the Honda Center, her and Grace, my son, my sunset buddy. Um, and so we just would stay late and like, let's try this, let's try this. and. Um, we were fortunate that um, we taught science together, like through all our kids in the same room and taught it together um, every week. So that was fun and just struggled through the struggles of a new grade together. And so it was nice to have somebody to lean on. And, and also she thanked me for like showing her, like, I'm like, I only have a couple more years on you, but like showing her what I do. And I'm like, take what you like, don't take what you don't like or learn from what you don't like. but. It was fun to have that last year. That's cool. I just heard an echo of the, the, what you said about giving the students like strategies and kind of encouraging them to pick what works for them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, our colleagues. Yes. Like you don't have to do everything the same way. Yeah. Take what works for you. Um, one of the things that works for you, apparently, according to the quotes, <laughs> are... Uh, Dressing up uh -huh. is oh, yeah. did I get okay? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you give me a a dress up costume. Like what's an example? Okay. Well, tomorrow we're uh, the big <laughs> oh, tomorrow. tomorrow. Listen, listen. We take dress up <laughs> seriously. Uh, tom tomorrow's gold rush day for fourth grade, where we spend the whole day. Um, my like we rotate. There's three of us this year, three classes. So my rotation is mining for gold with pit with a gold tin pans in a kiddie pool mm -hmm. and um, we're looking for little popcorn nuggets of gold in there and then there's like a old time spelling bee they make tin can instruments we rush for lima bean gold on the field like it's a whole thing so last year and the same is going to be tomorrow uh, I dress up as the villain and I have a mustache and a hat and a bandana like we commit yeah <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, the quote so uh, this is from Crystal says um, a moment during uh, that time of working together that sticks out to her was uh, gold rush day last year Jillian was a wanted fugitive <laughs> Uh, Crystal was its sheriff, and let me tell you, she really committed to the, that role. There are pictures to prove it. So you're doing it again yeah, this year. Yes, so I'm doing it again. Uh, last year, I made a want, like a poster with a cutout, and so I held it all day. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal took a picture before school and printed it like an eight by ten of me with the with the poster and hung it on her board. Like wanted, have you seen it? She was the sheriff. She also had a mustache. We she had a, we made her a sheriff's badge. Um, and so we went around and the kids were like, there, there he is. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like holding the wanted poster. Right. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine that it drove them crazy. It drove them crazy. <laughs> 
That's great. All right, so we have uh, a couple more quotes. We've talked about um, coats in. Um, someone said reinventing your math instruction, which I think is Tracy. Yeah, Tracy talked about that, talked about CGI, reinventing math instruction. Um, she called you a rock star, so I don't know if that's in general or with the math <laughs> instruction, but anything to add on the math instruction, things that sort of... Yeah, the CGI is the cognitively guided instruction so that's what i was talking about where your instruction is guided by what the kids are bringing you and um that's what she's seen a little bit this year so far um just having the kids lead the conversation start the conversation instead of i'm gonna start you're gonna listen it's what do you already know what do you think and then i'm gonna pull from there um and so that's what i was talking about earlier too like it's changed how i teach it's changed the conversations in my classroom it's brought students who and lindy was talking about this when she was um our interim principal for half of the year until dr g came back um she said there's students that i observed last year who never spoke in the classroom who are now sharing and eager to share and like I can't get their hand down because they want to share and so that's cause the CGI um, model and Coatsen have completely changed everything for me. That's awesome. Uh, Tracy also says and I think it comes through you're passionate about being the best teacher you can be but there's another quote in there um, that I don't want to skip over. Uh, it's not specific these are like abstract qualities that she says that you have I just want your reaction she says you're thoughtful kind and dependable mm. what do you think about that I like those adjectives <laughs> <laughs> like tell me some more tell no. me some. yeah <laughs> please tell me I I um I like being a part of a lot of things at school and um, when I was a librarian, my principal would put the adjunct duty list out in the beginning of the year. I didn't need to have any, but she already typed my name into like, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. And that is something I talked about when I applied to the district. Like I like to be in things like I like to be a part of things on campus and just have myself out there with the kids and trying. So we're doing FST Fest. We're the campus gardeners <laughs> we are doing the volunteer breakfast like just in we just did a reader's theater so i just want to be with the kids and make their time enjoyable but also i tell my kids too like i am still i'm in coats in or i'm going a couple weeks ago i went to a monday night math symposium to learn more and so i'm always trying to learn um to make myself a better teacher for my kids and show them like you can be a lifelong learner that's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to give you a choice. Okay. Uh, left hand or right hand? Left hand. Okay, so my left hand, the word inside here is tutu. Uh -huh. <laughs> give, me, <Yes. laughs> give, give me a comment about tutu. So <laughs> last year we did, um, we were unofficial, my fourth graders were unofficial partners or buddies with a TK class. And we could never just, they were AM PM. Like we could never make our schedule work to like be official buddies last year, but we take dress up days seriously around here. So um, TK in the beginning of the year spends one week each week doing a color. And so at the very end they did um, rainbow day. And so rainbow day, we got to go all out. So we made a tutu, um, my kids all dressed up. We had a rainbow like bridge and the TK kids walked to school and like under our bridge. Um, this year I bought a tutu, like a better one, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> last year I made it. Um, we also had like, I don't know. I wore it several times last year. I don't know what the days were for unicorn day. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. It's in my cabinet at school. The the first model. Yeah. Uh, my students wore it last year when we did um, after we read Tale of Despero and they were making iMovie trailers for book trailers. Um, one of my groups was a group of all boys and they're like, we don't have a princess P. I'm like, okay, one of you's gotta be it. And so one of my students was like, do you have that tutu? I'm like, I absolutely do. Pulled it out of the I closet. Did. He wrapped it around himself. He was the princess. Perfect. Yeah. I love it. 